I think there was a line in a movie like this, Mr. Chairman, Madam Chairman. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Doctor, Doctor. Anyway, it's uh, it's great to be here with both of you today uh, and hear, have this hearing. Um, I'd like to also thank our distinguished witnesses for coming to speak on this Iran-North Korea relationship. As we consider the administration's joint comprehensive action plan with Iran, we have to ask, will Iran follow through with its international obligations? After hearing the administration uh, explain the terms of the deal this morning, I can't be so sure. The deal could put Iran on a path toward developing a nuclear bomb within 10 short years. And as chairman of the Asia Pacific Subcommittee, I am concerned with the decades long nuclear and military cooperation between Iran and North Korea and exactly what implications the deal has on their prospects for developing nuclear weapons. North Korea's nuclear weapons program has been the primary focus of the U.S. North Korea policy for decades. It has tested three nuclear devices within the last 10 years and in May 2012 declared itself a nuclear armed state. North Korea appears to be expanding its capacity to produce both plutonium and highly enriched uranium for nuclear weapons. North Korea has repeatedly emphasized the role of its nuclear weapons as a deterrent and as a means to obtain concessions and cash in exchange for technology and components. North Korea has a track record similar to Iran of failing to meet international obligations. The February 29th of 2012 agreement committed North Korea to a moratorium on nuclear tests, long-range missile launches, and uranium enrichment at the Yongbyon nuclear facility, as well as readmission of IEA, I, IAEA inspectors. In return, the administration pledged 240,000 tons of food aid. The deal quickly fell apart when North Korea announced its intention to launch a long-range rocket uh, to launch a long-range rocket in March, successfully doing so in December of 2012. North Korea's sales of missile technology and sharing of expertise to Iran is a major concern. Iran has cultivated a close relationship with North Korea on ballistic missile programs, beginning with the acquisition of Scud missiles in North Korea back in the 1980s. Iran can continues to pursue capabilities that could ultimately be used to build missile deliverable nuclear weapons and missile sales and missile test information have been a key source of hard currency for the Kim regime. In the past decade, Iran and North Korea have also cooperated on nu nuclear research and technology. In 2015 alone, North Korea nuclear experts alle allegedly visited Iran at least three times to exchange information and intelligence. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter stated in April that North Korea and Iran could be cooperating to develop a nuclear weapon, including sharing technology related to nuclear weapons, material, material production or data from nuclear or explosives testing. The desperately insecure and cash-starved North Korea remains hell-bent on developing and improving its nuclear capabilities. With Iran's impending access to $100 billion of frozen assets under the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, Iran could use some of those assets to procure material, technologies and expertise from North Korea. I hope our witnesses can inform us about whether this should be a major concern for Congress. Given the history of cooperation between North Korea and Iran, I am very concerned about what the Iran deal may mean for our national security interests in both the Middle East and Asia. We need to know their motives and the implications of their cooperation so we can prevent bad deals from the start and not allow bad actors to unite in nuclear proliferation efforts against international agreements. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. 